Well, it's Rashomon. Yes, they do, and no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's always a good way to leave things, Frank. Oh, hello, I'm Frank Wong. I'm uh, teach mathematics at University of Oklahoma and at the Oklahoma School of Science and Math. That's a selective uh, public boarding school in um, Oklahoma City. And I have a question and a comment. My question is, and I really, you know, uh, I noticed that that uh, the colleges of education are often viewed dismissively or at best with indifference by their colleagues in the very same institution. So, for example, if I'm talking with mathematicians, I find that many that I've spoken and encountered to would um, uh, look unfavorably upon the course of study of mathematics required for those uh, in the School of Education. Is there really something here, or is this just purely academic snobbery on the part of the mathematicians? And the comment I have relates to this whole discussion about this good enough teacher is that um, I recently retired as a chairman of Saxon Publishers, and we published uh, textbooks that have been derided by the education establishment because of their obsessive focus on practice and on basic skills. But I left because of, to pursue a passion and desire to teach. And so I um, sent out applications uh, to public schools stating very clearly that I did not, did not have a teaching certificate. And not only did I not receive any job offer, I didn't receive an interview, even though I have a PhD in pure math from MIT. I've co-authored a calculus textbook used by thousands of students. And I've taught, guest taught, while writing my manuscript in many high schools throughout, um, you know, throughout the country. I finally did get an offer from the Oklahoma School of Science and Math, and I asked the headmaster why. And she said, because they are a state agency that reports directly to the legislature and not to the Department of Ed in the state of Oklahoma. It was set up that way. In fact, I think the school has the highest percentage of teachers who are PhDs in their content area of any high school in the country. They also had the highest ACT scores for two years running. But the headmaster did tell me prior to coming here to this forum that if they were um, established not as a separate state agency, but reported to the Department of Ed in the state of Oklahoma, they probably would not exist now, that they, the Department of Ed would, would move to kill the school. The, the question, Aaron, very interesting observations. The question is uh, whether the uh, disdain that we often see um, in the colleges of arts and sciences, in the departments, history, math, whatever it might be, for what happens in colleges of education, in teaching teachers, um, future teachers about social studies or mathematics, for example, whether it's warranted or whether it's academic snobbery. I'd like to ask my colleague, and Dr. Futrell, who's an audience who's a dean, who has, a, I think, a good relationship with arts and sciences, to maybe talk about that. Uh, Mary, would you introduce yourself yes, to the group? I'm Mary Futrell from George Washington University. And uh, I would agree with Mary. We've worked very hard over the last several years to build a close relationship with our uh, colleagues in the arts and sciences. But to go back to the question you raised, I think that that's a very legitimate question. And I think that unfortunately, in too many instances, what you have described does exist. Uh, in too many instances, uh, it's been very difficult for schools of ed to form partnership or relationships Relationships with arts and sciences, they do look upon their counterparts, I would say, in schools of ed with this disdain. But I also would like to go back to a point that uh, Dr. Cheney made, uh, especially if you're going to major in those areas, it's very important for the candidates to have a strong background in math or science or history, and that has to come from arts and sciences. That's a message we've still been trying to get across to many arts and sciences programs. We're beginning to make some headway. Are we where we should be? Uh, the answer is no, but we are beginning to make headway. Lisa? I just want to ask a question, and, and maybe, Mary, you may know, or maybe somebody from a College of Ed knows. Uh, is there any movement um, in the Colleges of Ed or certification organizations nationally, the, in the established organizations, for the, oh, thank God there's Frank? I, I mean, it seems to me that when Frank Wang says, I might want to teach, that it would be a great thing that without... 15 more seconds of pedagogy stimulation, you get him in a classroom. I mean, you talk about a great guy to have in front of your children or your grandchildren, which I do have. I mean, is, is there a movement going on for that? Because it seems to me, even just from a PR point, wouldn't that be a great idea? 
I think that um, I think that that question could be best posed to the school system, the, where where if, if Frank was, or maybe I'm misunderstanding oh, your question. Oh, you mean to the schools themselves? Will they just simply yeah. accept them? Yeah, okay. sure. Good. And then are they? Yeah. But Frank's point was that if his school didn't exist under exceptional circumstances, he could not be. So would that be okay with y'all if the schools would hire? The, oh, thank God, there's Frank. I'm sorry, I missed the group on this. Well, somebody I mean, else, go ahead. Okay. What? I, th I think someone I, over here understood. I've learned your name is Ira. <laughs> <laughs> I call everyone by a first name. It's because I'm from Wyoming. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to say, too, when I interviewed a number of teachers, I absolutely opened my door to Frank. And there are also a number of programs you have uh, the Teaching Fellows Program, you, New York City just established one, you have the DC Fellows uh, Program, so there are a number of jurisdictions who are going after the Franks and making, you know, making arrangements to get him in. But again, he would be an even better teacher if he had that 15 seconds or 15 minutes of pedagogical yeah. instruction. Now, I, now, I'm sorry, I, I don't know your last name, but could you just explain to me, would 15 minutes really get him in? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making fun, but, but the, the point is that there are a number of programs that have been established for people like Frank, and they're your teaching fellows programs. But don't you usually then have to go do your pedagogical requirements? Yes. I mean, there are some, there are some requirements. I mean, my God, we just, you know, we, we've got to mint him in the right way. But let me, let me offer you some interesting <laughs> information. A number of the Franks... Once they teach one or two years, leave. So the school districts are the, are, the, are the bodies that provide the support for the Franks are not getting the return on their investments because a number of them are leaving. We're seeing the same thing in the Teach American Corps. Uh, so I think we also need to put that on the table too and, and find a way to have them understand that those children need them in those classrooms and not after two years they can say, well, I was in an urban school. Now, I'm looking around here. We're really at an end, but um, I'll, I'll take one more question. You've been clear in the back row and probably yes. ignored. Well, I thank you, and you provided me to make the last comment a year ago. But... No. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is, is um, Jerry Dances, and I teach mathematics at the University of Maryland, and on the side I'm trying to persuade the state of Maryland to put algebra on the state algebra test. <laughs> um, and what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing a little bit is, is a considerable, considerable criticism of the, of the colleges of education and then as a possible solution, a completely alternate method of, of um, bringing, pe bringing people into the classroom. Um, it sounds like um, maybe some people have given up on the colleges.